Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes and I'm the National School Sports Champion. Key Stage 4 can be a difficult time for teenagers and often PE and sport are the casualties. Girls in particular tend to drop out and sometimes for the simple reason they hate their PE kit. This programme shows three schools all using good ideas to encourage Key Stage 4 girls and boys to get active and stay active. It's a warm summer's afternoon at Wexham School, a specialist sports college in Slough, and these Year 8 boys seem to be enjoying their cricket lesson. But the school, like many others, recognised that by key stage four, many students were losing interest in physical education and sport. Research by the local school sport partnership revealed an aversion to traditional competitive sports amongst boys and girls. The girls' attitudes reflected the national pattern and the partnership put in place a number of schemes specifically for girls. But teachers' worries about key stage four boys' participation rates alerted Dave Evans to another issue. It's a misconception, I believe, that it's only the girls when they get to key stage four that have, have uh, self-esteem issues and, and, and uh, issues of a body consciousness. I think a lot of the, uh, the boys um, also have feelings like that. So, students were asked which sports they would like to try. Something we do here, you know, basic things like asking the students what type of activities they would like to do. Um, so, they may come up with ideas, one of them which we've implemented, which is that some of them wanted to have a go at rowing. Um, golf is another activity. So, I think to engage the students through that, giving them some, you know, sense of ownership on that is, is very, very important. Three, two, one, go! Rowing seemed like a good idea for the adolescent boys who wanted to try an individual sport that would also help them get fitter and feel better about themselves. Ten minutes start now. Together with fitness clubs, rowing clubs for year 10 and 11 boys were established in schools throughout the partnership. Big lottery funds made them possible. Wet 30, keep going. The clubs are popular with boys who are keen to improve their fitness for other sports, but boys who don't enjoy traditional sports are just as numerous. It's different than like the other sports like football and that, because to be honest, I'm not really too good at them, and so I thought I'd try and do something else. And this was like it's quick and it makes you feel better afterwards. It's a short sprint. Ready? Three. Two, one, go! The partnership has also established links to a local rowing club so students can pursue their sport beyond school. Dave Evans believes the whole project benefits students in several ways. They're learning a number of things. They're learning the social skills, they're learning how to become more active, they're, they're learning how to almost engage in physical activity without it being a team environment. They're learning some kind of uh, self-motivational skills. They can work at their own pace and get their own, their own benefits out of it. 150 miles away in Taunton, Year 10 girls from two local schools are taking part in a scheme that's a local response to a national problem. Nationally, research indicates that young women are twice as likely as young men to become physically inactive. Here, the School Sport Partnership has received big lottery funding for a body management programme offered to girls who are disengaged with school in general and PE in particular. Seven, eight, nine. There were some problems within some of the schools that the girls turned off physical education and maybe disaffected not just within PE but also across the curriculum. So by hopefully using PE as a means to engage them in physical activity, we'd hopefully try and raise their standards and self-esteem across the whole school. Once a week for nine weeks, the girls go to Somerset College of Arts and Technology for an hour of after-school physical activity, followed by a session in the college's hair and beauty department. Getting them away from school is a deliberate move. I think very often within the school environment, they feel as though they're a centre for other people's attention, sort of a focus for sometimes some, some negative attention. So to get them actually here on site and taking part in some sort of physical activity is, is quite an achievement um, and I think the way that we hook them into that is by offering a balance by providing health and beauty as well. The girls try a variety of activities 
with the emphasis on fitness-related exercise that they can continue once they leave school. So what do they think of the scheme? It's really it's good. Really good. It's better than school. Because yeah. you don't feel pressured. Yeah. Like, like, you don't have to do it. Like You get the choice if you want to do it or not, and it's usually fun anyway. So. <laughs> it feels like we get treated more like adults than like, like little yeah. kids kind of thing. After the exercise comes the treat in the college's hair and beauty department. The girls acquire skills and experience some pampering, while the college sees it as a way to attract potential students. Now this is going to be moisturising. It's a moisturising face mask. Okay. Oh, it is a face mask. Yeah. What I want you to do is avoid the eye area. Can you do that eyebrow? You can do As yet, there are no hard data to quantify the scheme's results, but anecdotal feedback is positive. I think some schools have now started reflecting the fact that these girls have been better around school, and that levels of discipline and levels of attendance have actually increased. I mean, the feedback from the girls is that they've enjoyed the activity, they've actually felt, felt good about themselves. <laughs> Up in County Durham at Sedgefield Community College, the physical education staff have taken a school-based approach to increasing girls' participation in sport. They've implemented a wide range of low-cost changes. We've got lots going on this morning, uh, presentations, we have a special guest, lots of different performances. We've this assembly marks the start of Sedgefield's fourth annual Girls in Sport Week. It's the culmination of a lot of hard work for Assistant Head of P Nicola Bage, the driving force behind increasing girls' participation. The aim of this week is to encourage every single girl in here to take part in at least one activity if not more, this week. She was inspired to make many changes after attending a Girls in Sport workshop offered by the Youth Sport Trust. I wasn't very good at most of the sports that we did at school and I used to find it frustrating because I just couldn't do it. Totally by accident, I got into this sport called orienteering. Now, say it was the star guest is Heather Munro, the World Orienteering Championship bronze medalist one of several elite female athletes to visit the school in recent years. Things went a lot better for me at school. My work improved, started to get more friends, and I think it was finding something that made me feel good about myself that did that. A packed programme for Girls in Sport Week also includes taster sessions, so girls can try a variety of sports and a very public affirmation of girls' sporting achievements. But Girls in Sport Week is only one small part of the changes at Sedgefield. By popular demand, football has replaced hockey in the curriculum and a greater range of activities such as dance, gym, trampolining and sports aerobics is offered. The idea was to enthuse more Key Stage 3 girls so fewer would drop out at Key Stage 4. More fundamentally, Nicola knew that she had to address girls' dislike of getting changed into PE kit. The first step was allowing the girls to repaint their changing room and put up posters. Just over the last few months, some of the girls through art projects have been in and redecorated um, with their own work that they've designed in their art lessons. So hopefully it's a, a more welcoming place for them to come into at the start of a lesson. Next came dealing with the PE kit. As you can see, the old kit wasn't very nice. The t-shirt's really baggy. So when you were running, it used to pull you back and it just wasn't very comfortable. And also, I don't like my legs, so I didn't, didn't feel comfortable in the shorts that much. And again, like the shorts, if you're doing trampoline or anything, they'd all bag up and everybody could see everything, so it wasn't very appealing. The school adjusted its kit policy so that as girls move through years 9 and 10, they have ever greater choice about what to wear. And in year 11, they can wear their own sports clothes. As a special treat for Girls in Sport Week, these Year 10 girls are also allowed to wear their own clothes. But even the new regulation kit gets a thumbs up. This is the new kit and as you can see it's a lot better than the old one. It's got a nice bright top which isn't, doesn't have the collar so it doesn't rub against your neck. 
and the bottoms you can wear anything you want tracksuit bottoms or shorts in the summer if it gets too hot so you have a choice so if you feel self-conscious about your legs then you can wear tracksuit bottoms if you don't want to the top also has the uh, Setchfield logo on to show that it is for our school and I don't know if this top has it or not well the new one has a sports college logo on the side of it to represent our school as a sports college so I definitely think the new kit's better other changes included putting more girls' team photos on display, promotion of club links and consideration about what PE to teach when. We make sure that we offer them activities such as long distance running on the last lesson of the day so that they can go home and shower straight away if they don't want to shower here, which not a lot of the girls do. And we take into consideration if it's first lesson of the day that they could do something, for example, a throwing event where they won't become as hot and sweaty. Right girls, if we could listen for the register please and shout not doing it if you're not taking part. One of the most effective changes was a new way of dealing with the 15% of girls who weren't participating in physical education. Lessons had been marred by confrontations over failure to have notes from parents, lack of kit and a refusal to get changed. I'm not doing PE today, miss, because my PE kit was still wet off the washing machine. I left my PE kit on the bus, so I can't get changed to do PE. Miss, I can't do PE because I've really, really hurt me foot. I jammed it in between a door. Oh, miss, I've got cramp. I don't want to do PE. It's not fair. After careful explanation to students and their parents, a new system is in place. All girls change into PE kit, irrespective of whether they will participate or not. Because every student knows they have to get changed regardless, that cuts out all the confrontation at the start of a lesson. And by the time they're into the teaching area and taking part in the lesson, what tends to happen is that some of the girls that maybe didn't think that they could take part, um, because they already feel part of the lesson as they're changed in PE kit, tend to ask if they can just have a go and sit out if they don't feel well. In the past, non-participants would have spent lessons copying from GCSE PE textbooks. Now they are allocated support roles such as umpire, timekeeper or coach so that they are involved with the lesson and don't fall behind their peers. The changes at Sedgefield have produced remarkable effects. PE participation rates are 100% and in sport outside school hours, Seven girls teams in four sports has mushroomed to 34 teams in 14 sports. Participation outside school hours used to average 30% across years 7 to 11, but not anymore. Year 10, 52% um, of girls take part in sport regularly outside of school. And for year 11s, it's still 42% of girls that take part in sport. Um, which I think is really, really good. Three very different approaches are helping to re-engage key stage four students in PE and sport. But there are common themes behind their success. Students are consulted about PE and sport options. Adolescent sensitivities are respected in small but important ways and students are encouraged to find the activity that's right for them. Certainly, the Year 10 girls at Sedgefield appreciate the changes. Are you kidding me?